Welcome to the Peerless YouTube. This is class two of our mini series for portraits and today we will be doing three colors. So it's kind of going off the primary color chart but making them a little bit more interesting of tones. So instead of a red, we're using a pink and a yellow, we're using kind of like more of like a, like a mustardy yellow kind of gold. And then instead of a true like royal blue, we're gonna do that deep autumn's indigo, which is pretty, um, kind of not quite navy, but it's it's got a, just, you know, that really deep indigo gorgeous color. So with that too, if you are using that at home, make sure you go sparingly because it does pack a punch and there is a lot of pigment in that amount of paint. So dilute it as much as you can too, so that you can go a lot further. But I hope you enjoy and I can't wait to see your paintings. For your supplies, you will be needing Peerless Watercolors, watercolor brush and paper, a pencil, extra small paintbrush, an artist pen, a light box, and a white gel pen or white ink. Okay, so we're just going to jump right in. And first off was what we're going to do is make sure you have your printout. So if you have not watched the first uh, video, the first episode with how I get the printout and Pretty simple, but you know, I uh, take it offline and wherever I find my reference photo from, open up in my phone and then change it to black and white or grayscale and then change the light and dark and saturation and contrast around to where I want it. And then I print it out on computer paper. So this is going to be our starting point for this one. And basically, instead of making those lines where the shadows are, like the first one, we're gonna leave this one a little bit more simple, and we're going to be playing with a softer, more, like overall more white um, portrait, and a lot lighter, and then we're, the really bright colors that we're using are going to act as our shadows. So with this one, it's kind of more of like artistic expression kind of lines and, make it a little bit softer and a little bit more playful and a little bit more, I mean, I guess it could be moody too, but you know, more stylized, not necessarily a realistic photo, but really playing with these colors and starting to see what they do um, when they layer on top of each other. We've done that first reference photo. This one is more, you're gonna be more comfortable with it and know where all those shadows are. So instead of adding those lines and cross hatching for the darker areas, you're just going to be doing a gentle outline of where those, those really intense shadows are. And then when you transfer it onto your watercolor paper, you wanna make sure to put a very light pencil mark on this one. And the very first one we did, it's gonna be that hard pencil, hard pencil lines, cross hatching lines and directional things. This one, you can see as I'm doing it, I'm trying to keep the pencil lights pencil lines as light as possible and I will be erasing them as I am going with the painting.
Okay, so now we have our lines on our watercolor paper and we're ready to start painting. So looking at our palette, you can actually make a ton of colors with these colors all by themselves. So I'm gonna kind of play around a little bit and see what colors I can make. And also just to get comfortable with my palette. Uh, so that top one, the pink is very bright and then the yellow is very bright as well. But if you start layering it, it gets kind of more of a mustardy yellow. And then that autumn's indigo is kind of what I was telling you a little bit in the beginning. It is highly, highly, highly pigmented. So a lot goes a long way. And all of these colors together, you can kind of mix and dilute and kind of soften and make a muted tone of any of these together. But this time, I would like you to think about the warm, the cool, and the kind of like, um, yeah, like a warm to cool kind of tone. And for all of your mid-tones, I want more of a pink or a version of a pink a muted with a little bit of the uh, the autumn's indigo or a little bit brighter with the yellow for all of those mid-range tones. For your darker tones, you're going to use the autumn's indigo. And then for your lightest tones, you're going to use your amber yellow. So I think I think I, I think that made sense the way that I said it. So so in the beginning, with the first portrait, when we were just using one color, we started out with the mid tones. So this is the same exact way. So right now we are going to use a pink or a version of pink that is muted or brighter, however you would like, and that is going to be all of those mid tone sections. So you can see I put that pink layer down first, and now I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to it just because that's, you know, personal preference. This will area will get a little bit darker later just because I know that's gonna be like the deepest shadowed area, but I'm not gonna make it as intense as that first portrait. So again, mid-tones are some version and mix of pink. You can make it more orange with the yellow. You can make it a softer, more diluted purple with a little bit of indigo. You can mix all three to get a more muted pink. And then the mid, that's the mid-tones, so put those down first. And then your brighter tones and the lightest are going to be more of a yellow. And then your darker tones are going to be a mixture of the autumn's indigo, which is your shadow. So that was a very brief overview, so I'll explain it as we are going. But to get you started... Some of your outlining areas with your middle tones uh, we are going to add a little bit of that shadow into the eyes and I know the light eyes are usually kind of a white tone anyway and so most of the areas are going to be kind of more of a warmer or brighter tones with the pink and the yellow so a really soft blue for the whites of the eyes looks really nice so if you want to do that and just make sure that the eyelid uh, eyelid on the top and below are both dry before you do your blue for the inside of the eye Otherwise, you'll get some of those warmer tones pulling that into the eye like you know the white of it and it looks a little creepy So just kind of make sure that area is dry before you do that And then and you can see now her face is starting to take shape before you're even doing any of like the deeper shadows Which is kind of cool. So it's kind of um It's an easier not easier. It's more of a gentle kind of process um, because the pinks and the yellows mix very well together and you can get an idea of where you want those shadows and tones to be without too much commitment yet of the darker blue. So it's a good kind of practice to do. Um, if you're happy with where all those are, then you can think about where you're going to put your deeper shadows. But 
you know, it's still, they're still pretty light now, so they're not like, you know, set in stone yet, if you think of it that way. Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the eyes. And if you watched that first video, we're pretty much doing the same exact thing, but we are doing it in color. So we want to kind of really define that iris, like the outer ring of it, and then kind of take off most of the paint from your paintbrush and then get it wet close to that iris ring and then bring it towards the center. And then you get that kind of soft blend from the outer to the inside. And then, yeah, just, and you can start to see too, like as you're putting the blue shadows on the eyelids themselves and where the eye sockets are, some of the areas that were yellow or orange are now kind of green because of the blue shadow, or some of the areas that are pink are now purple with the blue shadow. So that's how you get those other tones in there with each layer. You're not necessarily mixing a green tone yet. You might definitely can if you would like a green tone, but as you're layering them, if the washes so like the first wash is the yellow and then the second wash is the blue if the first wash is dried and you put a blue wash you get a really pretty soft green where it overlaps but then you still get a really nice true kind of the blue color in the area that there is no paint on the page yet and it just makes it just so pretty in a nice effect and when we're doing more of these artistic really colorful faces that's where you get a lot of those bright tones that are still still visible and then you get all of those softer, more muted in shadow tones because of the layers that you are doing. We are ready to start with our blue so that color the autumn's indigo is so dark so i would recommend diluting the paint quite a bit for this first wash just to get comfortable and to know where you would like those shadows because you can always let it dry and then add another layer um there i do like to do the removing technique where you put water down and then lift it up it doesn't work as well all the time though, and especially if you already have a few layers of paint and colors and things. Um, you can always fix it. There's always little tricks you can do and kind of soften and move things around, but if you wanna be a little bit more gentle with it, I would do a little bit lighter washes and just let it dry and then kind of go again and see what it's missing and where you want another layer of darkness to be. 
Um, I love the way that I did the lips on the first video and the second video, but I did those two little circles for the plumpness of the bottom of her lip and the shadows that are all around it. I'm kind of circling those two circles to keep it really full and juicy. So, and then in the shadow again is kind of more of a pink or a purple and then whereas it's a lighter and in with a, you know, shining on it, it's kind of more of those orange. And I feel like you could see it really well on her lips because that, I guess, you know, the right side of her lip is the orange and by the time you get to the left side, it is more pink and purple and the gradient of color I feel like makes it really pretty. You know, like you can tell that that's the, where the light source is and where it's brighter, but it's still very colorful too. And with anything with these larger watercolors, there's always going to be a lot of paint on the page and you might want to get, or even not want to, but you might get stuck <laughs> working on the lips and just doing the lips for like 20 minutes. The, the best advice I can give you is to kind of like, oh, I like that. Stop working on it. Kind of rotate in your painting and work on something else for a little while and then let that layer dry so you can see exactly how the paint is gonna stay on the page before you add your next wash. So as my lips are drying, I'm working on the eyebrows and the eyelashes, not eyelashes yet, but I, you know, defining the eye shape and putting those first layers of the blue for the eyebrow hairs. And then now that I know it's dry a little bit, I can go back to my the lips and start working on those again. So all of my features are still kind of wet right now and so I decided that I want to work on the hair and I've decided to make it uh, that dark blue like the Autumn's Indigo just because I feel like the range from light to dark is just amazing in this and um, to get that level of dark for the deepest shadows like on the side of her face closer to her chin and then the softness of the little curls that are kind of blurred out in the photo and you don't see like you know actual tendrils I feel like it's just it's just so pretty and this color is like totally my favorite color and yeah the range is insane like you can go in the same brush stroke to almost black to almost white and just have this be this insanely gorgeous blue gradient all the way in between and I love it so much so working very soft and flowing and not doing too much. Um, I will do portraits later on where I am making the hair insanely 
detailed, but for these first portraits, this first mini series, let's just let the paint flow on the page and kind of give the idea of where the hair wants to be. Don't have to be too perfect and specific, but we'll kind of get there. We'll get there one day. <laughs> and if you want a hair tutorial, there are some on the Peerless YouTube as well. And if you want to combine them all together, that's, you know, what they're there for. So I am going back and adding the mid and shadows behind the hair and the reason that I wanted to do the blue hair on the forehead before is because if I were to do those pink and orange shadows and then did the blue next they would be more purple and green. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough of that blue down that I could stay that blue tone just because I wanted to kind of match with the rest of her hair. But if you did it already too, don't worry about it. The that dark, you know, the autumn's indigo is pretty dark and can kind of withstand quite a bit of other colors before it, you know, changes too, too much. But I'm kind of just making my shadows go around that, that little blue tendril on the front. So, little tip. back up to the eyes so now that we know that all of the eye and the eye area is dry we are able to do the next watch which is the pupils and the darkest layer of the ring of the iris um, and you'll probably will still need another wash of this I think I end, end up doing the artist pen to make it like a true black but you could see with every layer you get a whole new depth and a little bit more dark and if you have like that little you know the crease on the eyelid you might take a couple times to get there before you have that line visible and inside the iris you can add some of those kind of like striations and lines coming out from the pupil and then also just you know looking back and forth between your reference photo and then also i wanted to say too as i was already skipped forward a little bit um eyebrows look very very realistic and a little bit more detailed if you do the lightest wash let it dry the little bit middle tone wash and kind of defining where you want the actual hairs to be and then using your darkest after that so everybody has eyebrows and their individual hairs i have found that they look a little bit more realistic and just nicer if you include individual hairs and not just a chunk of color above the eye which I admit that I did a long time ago and I've, you know, now I've kind of come around to softness. Um, now we can do some eyelashes. I am using the Autumn's Indigo and kind of pulling it up from the inner kind of, what are they called? Waterline? Is that a waterline? And then if you saw the first video, I did a little, talked a little bit more about this, but I like to do groupings of three and then making kind of a swooshing. So I do that more when I'm using a pen and it's a very small brush stroke or pen, pen line. Um, a paintbrush is a little bit thicker when you kind of push down and then when you lift off, you get a really soft point at the end. So either one, however comfortable you are, Doing the pen might be a little bit easier and making those little swoosh starting with three and then coming up together or a little bit more defined and kind of quicker, quicker eyelash with a paintbrush um, kind of pushing down, not very hard, but then a swoosh. And then as you get to the top of the eyelash, lifting up to make the smallest gentle point at the top of the eyelash.
So by this point, you should be pretty comfortable with your painting that you have your, your mid-tones and your lighter tones and your beginning shadows that now you can add those darker shadows where you would like to, if you would like to, and just being a little bit more confident with a, a larger area. Um, that kind of cheekbone all the way down to the chin is probably my favorite shadow just because of those lighter tones that I did first and then I did that really soft wash of the blue over that whole section. So you get some purples, you get pinks, you get greens, you get yellows, you get all of them in there. And then when you take a step back and you look at her, it's like the correct shadow that follows that jawbone up to the cheekbone and it's so pretty. So uh, yeah, I hope you're a little bit more confident now that you can put your, your darker tones in there and your shadows and kind of just establish those last little bit pieces. Um, yeah, I do make the hair a little bit darker than the first one because I kind of wanted to give this like, you know, the darkness around her face and I wanted her face to pop, which I think it does. I think she's, yeah, kind of like a, like a sleeping beauty almost. Like she's just very, very light and fair and then has that really rich dark hair too. So I think it's so pretty. Totally different from the first painting, which is awesome and definitely something I was going for. I just... The difference of paint and using the same reference photo, you could have a completely different look to a painting. So pretty much I'm just kind of going around and doing little details, little areas that I might want to uh, establish kind of more facial expressions or tones or not tones, like facial, like just areas that need a little bit more depth to them basically. And then yeah, I'm making the lips a little bit brighter. Uh, I do use my artist pen a lot. So I think I go along the eyebrows and kind of some really defined eyelashes. And then after that, I think we are going to do, what are we gonna do? Uh, freckles, oh, freckles, I love freckles. Okay, so once you're happy with all of it, so you're not necessarily gonna wanna do freckles first and then kind of do the little tweaks and, and you know, movements. So you wanna make sure you're pretty comfortable with all of it and then once you're like, oh yeah, I think this looks pretty good, then it's freckle time because you don't want to do a wash over freckles because most of the times they're going to kind of bleed together and you might just kind of ruin your freckles. They might look pretty. Who knows? Maybe they do. Maybe I should try that. But next up, freckles.
All right, it is time. Uh, I'm doing pink freckles and with a little bit of the amber yellow, so more of like a, like a peach or, yeah, like a peach. Peach is peach, peachy pink, yeah, uh, freckles. And she gets a ton. So if you start out with a heavier amount of paint, I kind of do like a three dot and then move on to the next cluster. And then it kind of gets like the darker colors and the lighter colors as the paint is running out on the page. And then you just kind of like spread it out from there. Uh, try not to go in a straight line up or down sideways or anyway. That's why I kind of do like either like a triangle shape or a, you know, a diamond even. And then kind of work like that so that I don't get, they get like little clusters and like little stardust but not a straight line that looks a little funky sometimes unless they have like you know if you're looking at an actual picture and like whoa you have like five freckles in a row that's so uniquely you which is very cute uh yeah she gets lots lots and lots of freckles beautiful stardust And last but not least, the white highlights. So you wanna get that mirror reflection in her eye. I do white highlights on her eyelashes, especially because her reference photo, her eyelashes were blonde on the bottom. And with those darker shadows and the blues, it looks so pretty. Um, I do little dots around the, kind of like where that tear duct is, little around the hairline, you know, by now I do. I love my white highlights, the more the better, so. And yeah, we are getting pretty close to the end, so I will let it finish out. But I hope you learned at least a few things from this one. And I can't wait to see your paintings. And yeah, um, I will see you for the third tutorial, which is actually eight colors. So that one, full on going skin tone, you know, getting a nice golden tone to her natural, you know. Oh, goodness. There's a lot going on. I won't even get into it. We'll just see you there. I'll see you next time for the third portrait, which is eight colors. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends and we will see you next time.